Well, welcome back, folks. Today we're going to reassemble the front forks for the Yamaha Wild One in preparation for installing them back on the frame or into the triple tree. But before I go ahead and start that process, and you can see I've got some of the parts spread out here, uh, I want to talk a little bit about how I organize parts for uh, my various projects as I'm breaking them down as I, and as I'm preparing to reassemble. What you see on the screen right now is a print of the, a printout of the front fork assembly for the Yamaha YL1. This page came from Partzilla, as you can see right here. And I want to use these for my own purposes. I have a file folder, and as I work on major assemblies, I will uh, print this page out and use it as a reference as I'm determining which parts I need to order uh, and where I'm ordering them from. And I'll get to that in a little more detail in a moment. But I think you can see here the various uh, labels, the part numbers, that they not the part number from Yamaha, but the nomenclature that is the key that they have for the various parts. And I've highlighted in, in each case, in this situation, blue, with a highlighter, those are the parts that I was intending or have ordered. And this was created back when I first took the front fork assembly apart. So this is many months old. That's why I put it in a file folder. But as I'm taking the major assemblies apart after I remove them from the bike, I will go through each assembly, in this case the front fork, and identify which parts I, I really want to replace with new. And I highlight those, as you can see, the various nuts, bolts, uh, various pieces here that I'm intending to uh, order. Now, the purpose of identifying the numbers and the part is to tie into the spreadsheet that I create. And uh, as I take the major assemblies apart, as I alluded to, I will identify the parts that I'm expecting I'm going to have to replace in order. So the spreadsheet, and in this case, I think you can see I go back to November of uh, 2018, which was, well, this is summer of 19, so it was eight months or so, seven, eight, nine months ago. I ordered this grouping of parts. And you can see the nomenclature here, like where it's used, front fork, the diagram number, all ties into this Printout. So therefore, the diagram number that I have listed here would tie into the labeling on this printout so that I know which part was is used where. You can see front fork, stand brake pedal, um, etc. Down in here, I get into the clutch and some other things. And I use this to keep track of the parts when I receive them back in. In other words, it was delivered to my home here, it received. And then as I consume the parts, as I'm putting the project back together, I move it down here and change the color, which indicates it's been used. So if you look at the date used here, it says January 11, 2019. Those parts have already been consumed as part of the project. And these are mostly uh, engine uh, components and uh, triple tree parts and those kind of things. So that's the, the gist of how I organize my parts. Um, enough on that. Let's go ahead and get to the assembly of the front fork. Here you can see the various components that will be used uh, in the reassembly of the front forks. You can see along the top here the new parts that I've ordered. That would be uh, many of these parts that you see on the diagram that we've already talked about here. The repainted lower fork tube. Uh, some of these are the used parts. This is, for instance, a gasket that I have a new part in here somewhere right here to replace. And uh, so some of these pieces are going to be replaced, but I'm just laying them out here to show you the various components. I'm going to start with a, a right fork tube. It doesn't make any difference which one I would have started with. Here's uh, these, some of these same components. Uh, nomenclature is rubbed off a little bit here where it says uh, left fork. These have not been cleaned up. These have been. I have a similar bag for that said right fork on it that these parts, most of these parts came from. I'm going to begin the reassembly of the right fork tube with uh, installing the, the seal. This is uh, a rechrome 
part. This is called a nut. That's what Yamaha alludes to, or the nomenclature is fork nut, I think, is what it is. And this seal will be installed in here like this. You may recall, those of you who have been with me for a while, that this was a seal that I had to find a replacement. The original is no longer available. It had a metal band around it. And I believe Roy, the UK, mentioned uh, or found uh, a new version of that. And I had already purchased uh, this vinyl seal. We're going to go ahead and set up to install the, the fork seals. I'm going to do both the left and the right nuts at the same time. Since I'm going to be using my uh, little arbor, press this seal into this nut and it goes in cavity right there. It'll go like that and get pressed down. I'm going to use the arbor press. You don't have to use an arbor press, you don't have to use a press at all. You could probably do this in a bench vise that's large enough to capture this width here and just use the jaws and tighten it in. Uh, you can use a socket like this and a mallet and a block of wood. Many ways you can go about it. I'm simply going to use an arbor press because I have it. First thing I'm going to do is take this nut. I'm going to wrap it with tape, uh, masking tape, just to protect it, protect the chrome. And you can see I've already placed tape on the plate, the platen here of the press because this will sit like that then the seal will fit over the top of it and then I will take the socket like that and I'm just going to press it in. So allow me a moment here to wrap uh, masking tape around this and we'll come right back. I have the outside of the chrome wrapped with uh, masking tape to protect it. I put a thin, real thin film of clean grease on the inside of the nut that will be receiving the seal. I also put a little uh, grease on the perimeter, just a thin film on the seal as well to ease its entrance into the uh, nut itself. One of the things that I also did is I measured the depth here, which was 18 millimeter, and the thickness of the seal which is 11 millimeters, subtracted those 7 millimeters, that tells me that I should have approximately 7 millimeters uh, above that seal when it's seated fully. The reason I do that is I just want to make sure when I push it in that I'm getting it down without overpressing it. I don't want to distort the seal. Is that step necessary? Probably not. But again, I'm that anal retentive person and I want to make sure I seat that seal properly. At this point, it's a matter of placing the nut on the platen, lining up the seal, trying to get it square so it gets started straight. I'm going to take this socket, which fits just nicely on that seal, like you can see there. So that whole assembly will fit like that. Now I'll just position the socket in such a way, I'm not going to put any pressure on it, I'm just going to center everything over the ram of the platen and the uh, arbor press. So once I'm satisfied, I'm reasonably centered in, in both the X and Y dimension, like that. Now it's just a matter of pressing it in place. See if I can do this without getting in your way. And once you get it started, it'll go right in, like that. And there you can see it's pressed it straight in. Now this space here between the top of the seal and the top of the 
nut should be approximately seven millimeters. So I'm gonna check that right now. If it's not exactly seven millimeters, I'm not gonna sweat it. It felt like it's seated just right, but I'm gonna check it just to be sure. And it's uh, just a fuzz over seven millimeters. So that, uh, that seals in place. Now ultimately, what will go on top of this will be this large washer and then this spring guide will fit like that. This is for the uh, exposed external springs of the, of the fork itself. But that, that nut's done, so let's go ahead and we'll do the left side fork uh, while I've got the setup together. Here's the uh, second uh, fork seal, same setup as before. A little light grease, film of grease on the inside of the nut. On the outside of the seal, everything's aligned vertically. So we get a nice straight press. And now we're going to go ahead and just press it into place. Get my arm out of the way. That one also went in nice and easy. Think you can see there. Let's check and see how deep this one is. Again, it should be approximately seven millimeters. And we're about the same as the other one, about seven and a half. So I'm satisfied with that. So we've got the seals in. This one I'm just going to set aside for now. And we're going to continue the assembly with the first nut that we put the seal in. So as we prepare to assemble the front forks, well, speak just for a minute about the fork tubes. These are the exposed fork tubes. These are the originals for the project and you can see when I took them apart I labeled them left a couple of spots and right and as you can probably tell these are in very poor shape especially the right one. It's got a lot of corrosion, a lot of nicks, some pretty deep scars and uh, for whatever reason in the States, it's challenging to get these re chromed with hard chrome. You would think in a country the size of this one, um, getting these re chromed with the appropriate type of chrome, not decorative chrome, but hard cylinder type chrome, would be fairly academic, and it's not. And I understand there are a couple places around. The U.S. that do do this work, I have attempted to contact them in the past and really never got any response. I think they're too busy doing commercial customers and cylinders on heavy equipment and that kind of thing. So these were a problem. So my solution to that is I bought NOS, um, brand new NOS parts. I'm going to go ahead now and begin the reassembly of the right torque tube. You'll notice a couple of things. One is the lower painted fork tube itself I've wrapped with masking tape to protect it while I'm handling it. I also did the same with the chrome fork nut, as you can see here. Everything's clean. You've heard me preach about uh, working in a clean environment before. My hands are clean. The workspace is clean. And most or all of the parts that we're going to be using here uh, are laid out, as you can see. Regarding the uh, NOS uh, inner fork tube, I did clean that light uh, surface rust off here and here. The dead over on the brass wheel on my um, six inch bench grinder. So now we can go ahead and begin the assembly. First thing I'm going to do is add the drain plug a little tiny drain screw right here to the bottom of the fork tube, primarily so I don't forget it or lose it. Now, believe it or not, this, uh, this screw is not even shown on the parts diagrams here anywhere. They don't even call that out. But each of the lower fork tubes does have a drain screw, which is very typical. One other thing I didn't mention is I cleaned the uh, paint off the threads here where this fork nut 
spins on because I had a bit of a paint build up there. So let's go ahead and use a little anti-seize. I'm just going to put a little bit of anti-seize on the threads. doesn't take much. And we're going to go ahead and install that. I did not replace the gasket on that because I didn't think it needed it. It was still uh, quite soft and pliable. So we got the drain plug in. Next thing we're going to do is this uh, metal ring or slide fits down over the uh, fork tube. up against that ring that you can see right there. This O-ring is in the parts diagram right here. This O-ring is number four right there. And that goes up on the inside of this nut. So I'm going to take a little bit of oil, a little three-in-one oil, just a little bit. doesn't take much. Just to lubricate that up a little bit. This is the original O-ring by the way. Uh, this part is no longer available from Yamaha and though I could uh, get them on eBay they're a little bit expensive and this one is very soft. It's not hard or brittle. So I'm going to just go ahead and reuse it. And again this goes, there's a, there's a very hard to see, but there's a ring, a relief ring cut or groove down in here where this fits down in. So, let's see if we can't go ahead and just roll that right down in there. Get in just the right spot. Right there, you can see, I think that. That's just a seal, is what it is. Again, I'm trying to keep my hands clean as I go. Now we're actually going to begin the assembly of the unit. Uh, I'm going to put a little anti seize on these threads right here where the fork nut threads on. Um, act as a little lubrication as well as make it easier in the future if I ever, or anyone else for that matter, ever has to take it apart. Again, don't, don't need a lot. Just a little bit like that. This tube goes into that lower tube like that. So this inner tube goes into this outer tube like that. This collar, this metal collar fits in like that. So we've got the inner tube slid into the outer tube. We've got the bushing installed. The inside of this tube by the way was clean very well so it's clean in there. That's a reservoir for oil that we'll add later. Next uh, step will be to install the nut over the fork tube and thread it down. I'm going to add a little bit of oil here on the inside of the seal lips just to make it a little easier to go over that tube because sometimes it can be a little bit of a tight fit. So a little bit of 3-in-1 oil. Spread it around. Again, I've got NACs on the threads here. i got oil on the inside of the seal. See if we can't get this started.
There we go. Like that. And just thread the two together. I'm going to go ahead and tighten this nut up a little bit using a strap wrench, just a small strap wrench. I have several of these in different sizes, but since I'm not going to be putting an awful lot of force on this particular nut, I'm just going to snug it up using the strap wrench. Easier said than done. Get it on there nice and tight like that and just snug it up. Okay, now this large washer scutcheon plate goes on top of the seal here. And then this inner spring guide goes over the top of the tube and fits down on top of the washer. So we got the seal, the washer, and this, I think they call this a lower fork guide, like that. Next thing that goes on is the spring. This is the exposed spring. Uh, these are, I got two of them of course, um, NOS from Asia, again I think I got them out of Thailand, these are brand new, they've been used, it goes like that. We're closing in on the last few steps for assembly of the front fork. What we're going to do now is take this uh, top uh, spring retainer fits like that, captures the top of the spring. This actually fits inside of this cover and this cover fits over the triple tree like that. And this goes inside like that. This slides down over the top, captures the spring. This cover fits over the top of that like that. Remember the fork, I'm sorry, the part of the triple tree will fit in here when I assemble it to the bike. So this part will have to come back off. Then this new gasket goes over the top and fits into that groove like that. Then this trim ring. Now this is a new trim ring. Here's one of the originals over here. And you can see the chrome is quite badly pitted. So I just bought uh, two new ones on eBay. Uh, less expensive than I could have got these re-chromed. I don't remember anymore what I paid for these. But this fits like that. You can see the gasket in there. Black gasket. And then ultimately, this tube, this cover, it captures the headlight shell, fits like that. So that's really the way the assembly goes into the bike. But for all practical purposes right now, this right fork shock is assembled as far as I can go with it right now. The next step for this one will be going on the bike. So we're going to go ahead now and do the left fork, which will be a repetition of what we just did. I'm just going to go um, quicker. I'm not going to explain every step, but you'll see me going ahead and putting it together.